Hey, I need to I need to get a new hard drive. I'm just thinking about that. I have a running out of space and making all these videos. I'm down to seven gig on my hard drive. I had like 20 when I started YouTube three months ago. So I think I'm gonna buy like 120 gig hard drive. What's in my eye? I have a audition I gotta go to, dude. I'm like at the point now where I don't even want to go to these fucking auditions for these commercials. I know it's like the possibility is I'll make money, but I just don't care. Maybe it's just that I'm lazy, but I just, I found something so much more interesting in YouTube than acting. Not that acting is boring, it's fun, kind of. It's just not as fun. I'm not learning as much about myself from fucking going to auditions. Uh, especially when it's out in Santa Monica and I gotta drive an hour traffic on the way back is going to be abysmal. Um, okay, this is what I was thinking. I realized in the shower just now, I, I articulated it to Amanda for the first time, that I think if you want to be, you, per, you personally, each of us, but if you want to be a true a leader, a true leader, someone that people are interested in, someone when you make a video, people watch it and people are interested by it and inspired by it and want to do the same thing. It, what you have to do is you have to open up. You have to push it. F search for whatever it is that you're afraid to talk about. Whatever the most painful experience you've ever had is. The shit that you bury down and then open up about it. Just genuinely. Trust. Because that's where people will see it and, and want to emulate it. You know, we lead by example. We open up and then everybody wants to do that. People see it and they think, geez, I'm not alone. Because everybody wants to open up. Everybody wants to open up. So I realized this is what you have to do. We just need to open up. We can't sit around and talk about, <coughs> tell people what to do. Like this, like what I'm doing. You can't do that. Jesus. You can but you just have to open up too. And you can't tell people what to do. I'm just, I'm just letting you know, this is what I think. I think it might work for real because this is what I've been doing. And I think that's what makes the videos that I'm making so interesting. Because if I was talking about my job or about my money or about my PlayStation, my games, it's just not as interesting as when I'm talking about what I feel. Okay, that being said, I'm gonna open up about my parents, my mom and my dad, because this is something that's fucking crazy to me. My junior year of college, um, on, on New Year's Day night, I was went, I was home. Hold up. I wonder if it's a coincidence that my eye is burning right now because it's like my body is saying, "Don't talk about it." Um, I went home and stayed with my family about a half hour away from college and uh, my mom at like midnight came down and said hey I want to tell you something your dad has been having an affair on me for like a year with my best friend Kim who I knew because Kim would stay with us sleep on our couch all the time she's cool I still like her I just I haven't seen her since oh um, my mom went nuts she found out what happened was my dad came down downstairs and no no Kim came downstairs one morning and had a necklace on and my mom was like where'd you get that necklace and she said oh I I, I bought it and my mom said did, did Tim buy you that necklace he bought it for you didn't he and it was when that happened that everybody everything like she said everything clicked in her mind she just realized oh my god it was the same necklace that my fucking idiot dad had bought my mom like for Valentine's Day or something, or Christmas a couple years before. <sighs> so it, tr it turned out that he had been having an affair, and she was like, how many times, Kim? How many times has it happened? Kim said, one time, Becky, one time, I promise. So she said, get out of my house, I don't ever want to see you again. So Kim left, and then my dad came in or home or something, and she said, so how many times, Tim? You tell me the fucking truth. How many times has this been happening? My dad was like, I don't know. 50, 100. It happened over the course of about a year. And my mom was like, well, fuck. 
So a big explosion, you know, when I was at college and I wasn't really dealing with it. And I honestly, that well, this is right after Amanda had cheated on me and we'd broken up for the first time. I'd never been cheated on by someone that I was like in love with. And it was, dude, train wreck. I wasn't able, I, I was like getting horrible grades in college. I just wasn't going to class. And at the time I was thinking, oh, it's so crazy. I'm using this excuse of my parents and Amanda and stuff. Uh, I'm using it as an excuse to not go to class. And I felt like guilty about it. But looking back, it's like, of, of course, that was part of the reason why I was just playing video games all the time. Of course it was. I was just in denial of it. You know, we always are in denial of it, which is the reason why we are in it. Why we are in it is because we are deni in denial of it. As soon as we accept it, we are no longer in it. The depression, the anger, the pain, the fear. As soon as we accept it, that it's there, we're not in it anymore. It's a whole new type of game. You know, it's about looking at the solution as opposed to looking at the problem. Or it's, or it's about looking at the problem for the first time. So, my mom, you know, cried and cried. And I, I told her to leave him initially. But they stayed together. And they started working through it. They started going to therapy. And, and they did. They worked through it. They're still together now. And, they're, and, and like, they, they're, they communicate so much now. And it inspired me. And inspires me now to this day that it was one of the things that inspired me at the age of 20 that you can overcome any conflict any conflict it's just about wanting to do it it's about not letting not getting scared of it and um, I, I accepted that she said you know I can't leave him I don't have the money I have two kids that live at home one of my, my two brothers she said, well, I can't I mean, he'll live in a an apartment and he'll be paying rent in the apartment and he'll have to be paying child support and I'll have to sell the house because I can't afford the house. So they stayed together to preserve their way of life. And what they did was they preserved their way of life and they improved their way of life because they decided to take the route of talking about it. Although, you know what? They don't talk about it much these days. Maybe they should. Maybe I should because I don't talk about it much these days either. Maybe I'll call them. I really love my parents. I love that they, I really love my mom particularly because she, well, I can't say that because they both are very open but at the same time they're both very closed off. I mean, that's pretty much everyone. My dad struggled with them, he struggles with, with emotion. He has a hard time opening up. Not that he won't, he does, but he has a hard time doing it. You really have to, I really have to address it with him because I think he's in a mindset and I'm in a mindset where I'm his kid and he's my dad. So it's a different kind of relationship than just, but it's not, it's not a different kind of relationship. In fact, I'm going to call him now on my way to my audition. I have to go. I'm going to be fucking late. I'm finding a love for myself, an openness that I've never had before in my life. It's on a whole new level.